Hi fellow artists, my name is Lauren. I am the artist behind Potato Art Studios and in this video I'll be coloring my lovebird named Craig. So if you're interested in seeing how I color feathers, beaks, and bird feet, just keep on watching. So I transferred my reference image onto my piece of paper using the grid method and I'll leave a link in the description box down below and also have a card pop up here with my video that demonstrates um, how I make my grids and also how I set up my file in my photo editing program to transfer that information. I'll also have a link down to a great article for you to check out as well. So in this first layer of the drawing, I am basically just doing sort of a paint by numbers. So wherever I see a color, so basically red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, gray, black, um, I'm going to color that on my piece of paper. So I'm not too worried about detail at all at this stage. I'm just trying to get cover the entire subject on my paper with color. So if you're having a hard time kind of imagining how I'm thinking about this. Try and use a blur tool or a blur filter on your image so that it removes all of the details so you're just looking at the color. And that's kind of what I'm trying to do here. I'm not worried about drawing feathers or drawing any details. All I'm worried about is getting green where green should be, getting orange where orange needs to be, and just making sure that the surface area is covered with colored pencil. So as you see me color, I am lightening my base sketch with the kneaded eraser. And the reason is because I don't want the, the sketch marks to kind of be embedded into the drawing. So I'm lightening my sketch as much as possible before I go over and color because I don't want to trap my sketch underneath the color and have that be sort of distracting so lightening your base sketch as you go is a good way to make sure that um, you don't kind of trap your base sketch in your piece of paper while you're coloring. So now I am blending that first layer of color with odorless mineral spirits and I'm using a number 10 Fauvert brush and also a tiny detailed brush by Creative Mark. And I'll leave a great video tutorial by Lakri where she explains some nice techniques how to use odorless mineral spirits to blend colored pencil. And I will of course have a complete list of all of the materials that I used in this drawing down below if you'd like to check those out. And so as that odorless mineral spirit dries, um, you'll see that it basically the drawing turns darker when it's wet and then as it dries it turns light again. So after my areas have dried I'm going to go over Craig again but with the second layer of color and my goal in the second layer is to create um, some color variation. So for example with his forehead it's a yellow orange color so I'm going to be using a darker orange, a lighter yellow, some white to create that color variation to make it look like his forehead has some volume to it and so that it's not flat. And we're doing the same for his body. I'm just adding some color variations so his body is green but we're adding some browns, um, some darker greens to it to kind of build up his feathers and kind of make it feel like he's a more of a round object rather than a flat bird on a piece of paper. So we're zooming in right now and you can see that I'm trying to carve out some of the details on his face and I put a lot more detail onto the face than the body because the face is where most people tend to spend a lot of their time looking at a subject. So I want to make sure that his head is fully rendered and I have the most amount of detail in his face. So 
So now I'm putting on the second layer of odorless mineral spirits and doing a bit of cleanup of some of the one inch grid marks surrounding Craig. And once Craig is dried, I can go in with the third layer of color. So in this stage, I'm trying to build up the feather texture. So I'm not drawing individual feathers, but I'm trying to draw the main features. So I'm doing the highlights of some of the smaller feathers around his face and also trying to create the kind of subtle shadows that happen when the feathers layer on top of each other. And for Craig's body, because the gradient transition is so subtle between his head and his body, um, I'm using the clear ruler to kind of help guide me. So I'm matching up the ruler markings to my one inch grid and I'm using my reference picture that also has the one inch markings so that I can kind of find my way through his body because it's very subtle where the color changes. So with most birds and actually a lot of smaller birds, they have a gradient of color. So it's with Craig here, he has a gradient of orange, a light orange pink to a kind of like a green tea green to him. So it's interesting to figure out how to make a gradient on something. And so I'm just lightly building up color and making sure that the transition between the orange and the green is uh, kind of gradual and it's not abrupt. And now I'm blending out his whole body again with the third layer of Gamsol. So now on the fourth layer of color, I'm working on creating that sense of brightness. So if you haven't watched my uh, color pencil tutorial on how to color a yellow rose, um, in that video I explain that yellow tends to be naturally transparent. It's a lot less pigment per binding medium than most other colors for some reason. Um, and so to get around that, to get the yellow to really show up on this toned background, I'm alternating between using a light gray and a white and my yellow. And so that helps the yellow actually stand out more because it has a light base to help kind of push the yellow a little bit more. And now I'm using my Karandash Luminance pencil in white to draw the highlights of the feathers and so this the luminance white is one of my favorites to work with because it tends to layer on top of existing areas quite well so i'll draw the highlights first and then i can go over the yellow or a orange um, if i need to to create those bright colored highlights And now we're moving into the body. So we're really working on building up those shadows and giving the lovebird more volume. We're darkening the areas under the wings and because the light source is actually behind him, the center of his body is actually darker. So normally if your subject has a light source in the front of it, the center of the body would be brighter but because he is backlit, actually the edges of his body will be lighter and the center of his body will be darker. And where the light source is, you have to make adjustments based on your reference picture. So as we're going into the body, I'm trying to create that sense of volume. So I'm subtly um, darkening some of the areas to kind of create the shadows that I see in my reference picture. Again, we're take some time to build up the dark values. So we're going in into the, the cast shadow of Craig again. And so as we're nearing the final hour or two of the drawing, I'm actually 
stepping back from my drawing quite often to evaluate what areas I need to adjust. So I'll have my reference picture on my computer monitor and I'll have my drawing right next to it. And so I am standing back about every 10-15 minutes from drawing and just evaluating if there are adjustments that need to be made. So we're just basically fine-tuning the details at this stage. So it's important um, as you're drawing the fine details to keep your pencils very sharp. I would recommend investing in a good uh, electric sharpener if you can, and I'll leave a link down below to the one I use. I am taking my time and putting a lot of effort into the beak, and I think the beak is very difficult to draw because it has a semi-translucent property. So for, if you didn't know, bird beaks are made out of keratin, just like your fingernails. So it's actually somewhat translucent and almost, and somewhat reflective. So you have two different properties going on in the same area. And so in order to get that translucency that I wanted, I had to layer a lot of colors on top of each other to kind of replicate what the light would do as it's passing through some layers of the beak and it's also reflecting off the high points of the beak. And I think we're about wrapped up. So this is the finished image and here is the image that I drew just over a year ago. I thought it'd be interesting to revisit something I drew in the past and so the drawing on the black background is the same reference picture, but this was drawn on the black Strathmore paper and the, the drawing that I just finished was completed in late June. The background color being black was not a great choice at the time, but I was very proud of myself with what I was able to do considering this was the first bird drawing I've done had ever done. My tip for you if you're an artist starting out is to really keep your old drawings just as a record of how you were able to draw in the past. So if you compare yourself to what you were like a month ago or a year ago or even a week ago, um, it's really encouraging to see how you make progress and I would say don't throw away your old drawings, even if you're frustrated with them, just keep them in a binder somewhere. And if you need that little pick-me-up or encouragement, um, it's always a great thing to look at how far you've come as an artist. If you'd like this video, give it a thumbs up so other people can find it. I post Time Lapse Tuesday where I basically have a video from start to finish of me coloring a different subject every Tuesday. I'm also working on a mini series where I'll be doing just quick five minute art tips that I'll be posting sometime later in the week. So if you're interested in seeing any future videos from me, please subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so you'll be notified when I have new content up. And thank you very much for watching.